You're listening to Bible Truth Feed, a podcast by Christadelphianvideo.org for Christadelphians and all those seeking the truth about the Bible message. Join us now as we present our latest episode. Hey, Bible students, good to be back with you again to discuss what's going on in this world and to see what the Bible has to say about it. This flag of Russia is what really has got our mind in a, it, we're just captured by it because it seems like all the time we're seeing what's happening in Russia. What is Russia doing? And uh, you know how that primarily it's, it's uh, about Ukraine. It's uh, what, how's the battle going? Who's winning and what's Russia really doing? Is, are they going to go ahead and take the whole country or just part of it? And then, of course, we have been illustrating to you that what the Bible says is that if this man, this man of Russia, really has hooks in his jaws, which we mentioned would mean that he would be um, a person that God is working with to fulfill his word, then, of course, he will go on to Israel. So the question that we want to put before you is what does the scripture say that's really what we want to draw to your attention and we recognize that there may be a lot of people who have joined us in watching these videos who have not been with us for the whole series and so we're we're trying to in this particular video just uh, catch up a little bit with those people so yes it was russia first that was the way we started it was Ukraine because this is going on before our eyes, but the Bible has directed us to think of Israel. Now, what does the Bible say? Well, we went to Ezekiel. We went to Ezekiel 38, and it's repeated to some extent in Ezekiel 39, where it says, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around, lead you on, and bring you up from the far north, and bring you against the mountains of Israel. So, from a Bible's point of view, we are seeing God working with a Russian leader whose intentions are to go against Israel. He won't know that God is is drawing him, or that he really has hooks in his jaws, but we will see the influence that God has on him, because He's doing things according to God's word. That's the blessing associated with being a Bible student. Now, recently, we have tried to attract you by using Zechariah chapter 14, which we believe is a parallel passage. It's talking about the things that Ezekiel 38, Ezekiel 39 are. But, you know, from a a little different perspective, adding a few things and and other things are, are being left out. But basically, you can see how it is the same prophecy. It's speaking about the same timeline. So it says in Zechariah 14, verse 4, in that day his feet will stand upon the Mount of Olives. And the question we had was, whose feet? Why why would anybody be directed to look for somebody and say, it's his feet? Well, it's his feet because his feet were the feet that people recognized They recognized him because his feet had holes. They had the imprints of the nails that were put through him. And I believe it was there to illustrate beyond, you know, any question that this was Jesus Christ, as it will be used in the future and something that we'll probably speak about, Lord willing, in a a future video. But there you have, see, there's the Mountains of Olives. There is the Russian Orthodox Church of Mary Magdalene sitting at the base of the Mount of Olives. Yeah, Russia, to the sense, is, is being ready for this since the time of the czars when they bought up a lot of real estate in Jerusalem. But now this is a passage we haven't spoken about much and which we will have to speak about as we continue because this is a most important Bible prophecy that there will be a worldwide government that God will set up. And he set it in the basis of a dream that King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had going back to the times of the captivity of Israel. So Daniel chapter 2, and at verse 44, this is what Daniel said God was trying to tell him. 
that in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. And it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Now, that might be far from the minds of many people today that there ever would be a worldwide government. But if you really think of what this world desperately needs, it is a worldwide government that people will respect, that they will honor, that they will see is really interested in the well-being of all the individuals. And in particular, it has God's blessing. So keep that in mind. Now, there's another prophecy. And this is in the book of Revelation, a book which the uh, Lord Jesus Christ gave the Apostle John so that he could understand the things that would shortly come to pass. And he sent, and he says he signified it by his servant. So then it says, in the sixth angel poured out his bowl upon the great river Euphrates, and the water was dried up so the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. Now, this introduces a new term for us that we haven't looked in Bible prophecy yet. Who are these kings from the east? So we'll hold that and just look a little more at why he puts the attention on the river Euphrates. So you have a map there. And you can see that at the top or at the origin of the river is right up there uh, in Turkey, in the mountains of Turkey. And the water runs down from those mountains all the way down through Syria and through Iraq and right down into the Persian Gulf. So it entails going through a number of, of, of nations. But at one time, the nation of Turkey occupied them all, or maybe we should better say it that that was part of their kingdom at that time, but it would dry up. And as God has used that symbol in other places, that when a river dries up, it is the symbol of a nation drying up. So we believe that in particular, 1917, when the British went in to Turkey, it was a matter of the river drying up to a great extent, but not totally. Now, this is the very next verse in Revelation 16. It says, Behold, I'm coming as a thief. Now, I didn't put, the, put that prophecy together. It wasn't me that put verse 15 after verse 14 and before verse 16. But God and the Lord Jesus Christ put that verse there for the reader, for you and I to see. Behold, I'm coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So to this is to an extent a warning to the reader that at the time you see these things happening, beware. The Lord is coming as a thief. And so we saw how the empire yeah, needed men. And uh, when we see those nations involved in that poster from World War I, we're looking at part of the, the uh, Euphrates River drying up politically. And that's why we are interested, very interested, why Britain would be involved and why we see the identity of Britain in Tarshish, which is a, another line of reasoning, but you can trace that through the scriptures and come to the same conclusion. So there's a lot of things here that are leading us to the next verse, which is something that most people have heard of. But, well, they haven't heard of the whole verse, but they've certainly heard of that term Armageddon. I was quite surprised at how people took that idea and placed it on a McDonald, uh, McDonald's where you can go in and buy a hamburger. And uh, on this window of McDonald's was Armageddon, it was some kind of a, of a contest they were having. But that's not the, the gist that the Bible gives to this at all. It's not something to be laughed at. It's not something to be mocked. Why did he say, for instance, he gathered them to place in a, in a place called, in Hebrew, Armageddon. Now, Bible students have looked through the Bible from cover to cover and have not been able to find this word in any other place than in Revelation 16, verse 16. But it says, in the Hebrew tongue. And so, there's a little bit more to say there about that than we have time for this morning. But I would like to make sure that you keep that in note that uh, Armageddon is a code word for the battle to come. When God will bring the nations together, I believe 
to Jerusalem, as he says clearly in other passages, and will deal with them as his word describes. You see, this opens up where I really wanted to go with this video. In Zechariah chapter 4, 14, verse 5, it says, Then you shall flee through my mountain valley, for the mountain valley shall reach unto Azel. Yes, you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, the king of Judah. Thus, the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. Now, the question is, who are all the saints? And again, many people come up with all kinds of ideas. But the way to get the answer to that is to look at what God has said about the saints, how that idea develops itself in the scriptures. And that's what we would like to do in a program coming up. You see, when you look at Jesus Christ coming back to Jerusalem, he comes back to be king. The king, the throne of his father, David. You may have sung this in Christmas carols at Christmas time. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and will call his name Jesus. If you didn't sing the Christmas uh, carol, but you attended uh, maybe a playing of the uh, Hallelujah Chorus, you would have heard the hymn about this. This is something that many, many Christians know about, but if they really think about what it means, that his name would be called Jesus, he will be great, he will be called the Son of the Highest, the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. Now, you've got to make that link, Bible students. You've got to see why Jesus comes not to sit on a, a throne that, you know, there's no attachment to the scriptures otherwise. No, it is the throne of his father, David, which has been vacant for centuries of time. And he will assume that kingship again. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. So in our next video, we'd like to follow this idea up. Who are these saints and how do they relate to this kingdom? I hope you would find that a very interesting and challenging subject. So Bible students, continue to read God's word. God's word has the answers for what we're seeing in this present world. And may his blessing be with you as you do his study. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We hope you found the episode helpful. Don't forget, most of these episodes are also available as videos on our video channel, cdvideo.org. So head over and take a look. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please get in touch or leave us a voice message. We love to hear your feedback. You can email us at bt f at cdvideo.org If you enjoyed the episode, then please share it with others. Until next time, may God bless you in your studies and your walk towards God's kingdom. Amen.